is not true. A few months later, a group called the Freebies put out a, a record, a video, based on the Bee Gees staying alive, and this was, they called it 9-11's a lie, 9-11's a lie. And in the middle of that film, I was very pleased to see the Washington Post with three-inch headlines saying, FBI says Ted Olson's story is a lie. <laughs> in any case, how many people would still believe the official story if they knew these facts that the FBI has now revealed that undermine the official story but our mainstream press refuses to tell us about. Very few. This supports my point that most people who continue to believe the Bush-Cheney conspiracy theory believe it only because they are unaware of the dozens or even hundreds of facts that contradict this story. For my final illustration of this point, I will discuss the collapse of Building 7 of the World Trade Center. The Truth Movement has long considered this collapse the official theory's Achilles heel, its most vulnerable element, for several reasons. Building 7 was not hit by a plane. It had fires on only a few of its 47 floors. And it came straight down in virtual free fall, looking every bit like the kind of controlled demolition known as implosion, in which the building folds in on itself and ends up as a rather tidy pile of debris. Defenders of the official story clearly did not want the public to focus on this building during the first several years. The 9-11 Commission did not even mention the collapse of this building. Is this not remarkable? The first building in our universe, <laughs> steel frame high-rise building, to come down because of fire alone and they could not afford one sentence in their 571 page report to mention that this building collapsed. Likewise, after 9-11 itself, the day of 9-11 itself, this collapse was seldom, if ever, I think never, shown on American TV again. And evidently, from what I understand, uh, not on European uh, television networks either. And NIST continued to delay its report year after year. The report was supposed to come out simultaneously with the report on the Twin Towers in 2005. But NIST said, oh, we're not finished yet. We'll have it next year. When 2006 came, they said, we're not finished yet. We'll have it next year. When 2007 came, they said, we're not finished yet. We'll have it next January. When January of 2008 came, they said, not finished yet. We'll have it in August. They did publish uh, a preliminary report, uh, a draft for public comment in August of 2008 with uh, the final report coming out in November of 2008, just as Bush and Cheney were about to leave office. My next book will be about NIST report on Building 7. This book will show that their report inadvertently reveals that a plausible defense of the official theory about Building 7, according to which it was brought down by fire alone, is simply impossible. To attempt this defense, NIST had to ignore various kinds of physical evidence in the World Trade Center dust such as the existence of particles that could have been formed only at extremely high temperatures. Temperatures three or more times higher than could have been caused 
by the fires. The dust also includes elements that seem explainable only as residue from nanothermite, which is classified as a high explosive. Thermite, ordinary thermite, is an incendiary. It causes fires. It's been around for over a hundred years. But nanothermite was only created in the 1990s. And it is an incendiary, but also a high explosive, more powerful than most explosives, high explosives that you know about. The dust even includes active thermitic material discovered by physicist Stephen Jones, which appears to be unreacted nanothermite because when you put a flame to it, it explodes. So it's not paint. This is the conclusion of the new paper which I mentioned earlier, for which the first author is Copenhagen's Niels Herrett, who is an expert in nanochemistry. When NIST was asked whether it had checked the dust for evidence of thermite, it said no. When a reporter asked Michael Newman, a NIST spokesman, why not, he said, because there was no evidence of that. This circular answer led the reporter to ask, but how can you know there's no evidence if you don't look for it first? Newman replied, if you're looking for something that isn't there, you're wasting your time and the taxpayer's money. NIST also ignored and distorted testimonial evidence that explosions had gone off in Building 7. The most important such testimony was given by Barry Jennings of the New York City Housing Authority. As soon as the North Tower was struck that morning at 8.46 a.m., Jennings rushed, as he was supposed to, to the 23rd floor of Building 7, which housed Mayor Rudy Giuliani's Office of Emergency Management. But when he got there, along with Michael Hess, Giuliani's lead attorney for New York City, his corporation counsel, they found that everyone had left, and left suddenly. There were half-eaten sandwiches. There were steaming coffee cups. Calling to ask what they should do, Jennings was told, you should get out of the building and get out of there fast. They tried to go down the elevator. It would not work. So they started running down the stairs as fast as they could. Jennings, a big man, said he was taking one landing a landing at a time. Finding, uh, but when they got to the sixth floor, Jennings said the, the landing was blown out from under them by a giant explosion and they were only barely able to hold on to a pole, pull themselves up, go back up to the eighth floor where they broke a window and signaled for help. And Jennings said, I looked out the window this way and that way, and I saw both towers were still standing. They had been struck at that time, but they were still standing. Which makes sense, because this would have been about 9.15. However, when Giuliani wrote about the 9.11 experience of his friend Michael Hess, he claimed that this big event that they called an explosion was really just some effects from the debris from the collapse of Building uh, 1, the North Tower. Now, when did the North Tower come down? At 1028. So at least about an hour and a quarter later than the event they reported. Nevertheless, Giuliani's version became the official story. It was defended by NIST in its 2005 report on the Twin Towers, which also mentioned a little bit about Building 7. And then in 2008, by a BBC special on 
building seven. And by the 